Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a quick tutorial on some of the different audio effects that you have available in Aussie Render. Um, so this audio effects panel on the right uh, gives you all of the different controls you can kind of mess around with to manipulate uh, what image you have. So here I've opened a SVG file using the Choose Files button. Um, and then I've gone in and uh, I can enable these different effects. So this first one's a bit crush. Um, as I highlighted in the general overview, if you want to um, automate these different uh, sliders, you can use this drop down here on the right. So say I want to, let's do a sine wave one. This will um, you know, enable and, and disable the effect it, uh, going over the full range of the slider using a like sine wave uh, function. And uh, you can control the speed of how, how quickly this happens using this, uh, using this slider now. So when it's green, that means it's now controlling the speed of the uh, oscillation. I'll put that back to static. Um, I'm just going to go one by one and show you all of these different uh, effects now. So starting with next, the, the bulge effect. This increases how like large the image looks, kind of bulging it from the middle. Again, um, you can sort of automate this using the drop down on the side. The next one is vector cancelling. Um, the default value for this will make it so that you can't hear the audio anymore um, because it inverts the audio at every other, every other um, audio sample. If you increase this, you'll start to hear it again and you'll get some interesting like beam looking effects um, where everything kind of goes into the middle and you can see this sort of cool uh, effect there. The next one is a fairly basic scale. So you can scale in different dimensions. Um, you know, X, Y, and also Z. Uh, Z is only relevant if you're opening a 3D object or using some of these other effects that manipulate uh, things in 3D. Uh, distortion. This um, distorts the image on a different axis. So it's similar to the vector cancelling effect where it creates these nice um, high frequency lines. Um, and again, you can do this in any axis you want. Uh, the default is the Z axis. And uh, you know, if you do this in conjunction with a rotation, uh, you'll get some nice three D looking um, uh, images. Even if you open just a two D uh, image like I have here. The next one is the ripple effect. Uh, here you can sort of yeah create this nice ripple, um, and you can use these different sliders here to uh, control different aspects of it. So the first one is the ripple depth. This controls like how strong the, the ripple is. If I do it just a, a small amount, you'll see these ripples, but it's much more subtle. If I turn it up all the way, you're going to get these much more strong uh, ripples. Again, this works in conjunction with rotation. So if I do it just a small ripple, you'll see this like 3D depth of that um, ripple effect happening. The next one is the ripple phase. By default, this is set to be automated with the sawtooth. That means it's going to just continue this like uh, oscillation throughout. If I increase the speed of this, you'll see some like interesting effects come out of it. Um, if I decrease the speed again, you'll just see that like but a bit more slowly. You can change the rip ripple amount as well, which controls the number of number of ripples that appear in the image. If I turn this all the way down, you're just going to see it like move in and out. If I turn it a bit more high, you'll see some waves forming, and then much higher, it's uh, a lot more aggressive rippling. Uh, and then combined with the depth, you kind of see the effect of that. The rotation one we've covered in detail, but just wanted to show that you can also rotate different axes like this. Um, you can also rotate the Z axis as well, which will rotate um, around sort of the main image. You can also double click all of these sliders to, to res reset them back to the default value. So if I double click here, it will go back to normal. The next one's fairly basic is a translation. So you can move things left and right and up and down. Next, we have a swirl. As you might expect, this swirls the image around the center. So um, you can sort of, yeah, get a nice looking uh, swirl effect again in conjunction with uh, all of these other different effects. The next one is called smoothing. This smooths out some of the like harsher bits of the image, giving you a slight sort of like de decomposing effect. So some of these like uh, harsh bits here where, um, you know, we've got these artifacts. If I increase the smoothing, 
um, it'll decrease those artifacts and then introduce these sort of like wispy parts um, on it. So it's going to be quite a cool one if you're trying to emulate some uh, lower bandwidth oscilloscopes or if you're trying to just get a cool effect out of it. The next part is wobble. So this wobbles the image as a whole. Um, again, this uh, is defaults to enable like this LFO, uh, which increase uh, controls like how fast it, that wobble effect is applied. If I reduce the wobble amount, you can kind of see this a bit more subtly, um, and just have it sort of respond like that. The next one is more of like an audio-based effect. So this is a delay um, for. Uh, for vi visuals, this is going to be probably less desirable, but you can kind of get some interesting effects out of it if you reduce the uh, length of the uh, of the delay here, or just change how the decay works. So um, yeah, this one's an experiment with more for the audio side of things. Next one is a dash length. This controls um, how uh, this basically controls different ways of like drawing the image. If you get this at the right frequency, you can kind of see how this works behind the scenes. So you can see there's these little dashes uh, that are drawing the image. Rather than drawing the entire line, it's drawing it in dashes. And controlling this will um, control those size of the dashes. So let me try and find another bit. There we go, you can quite, get quite a cool looking bit now. I'm gonna skip over this next one for now because this is a custom effect that uh, lets you script whatever you want um, and make your own custom effect. I'm going to cover that in a separate video. Finally, we have the trace effect. This draws out the image, and again, by default, this will draw it in a sort of sawtooth fashion. If I slow this down, you can, you can see exactly like where it's drawing it at, at what point. There's also the start part, part of this, which controls um, where in the image it starts drawing. Um, and uh, so that you can like automate this um, in a bit more detail. So if I change this to static, I can change this to uh, say only draw the first like half of the image. So we put 0 0.5 in here and then I could change this to sawtooth. And now um, it's only ever drawing half of the image but it's changing uh, the, the start position of that. And, and uh, so it's sort of drawing the whole image, but like not all at once. If I reduce this, it's gonna draw less and less of the image at once. Um, or I could do it like nearly all the way and it will just sort of do an inverse trace almost, uh, only uh, missing part of the image at once. That's a general overview of all of the effects in Aussie Render. As a little, uh, present for reaching at the end of the video. There's also a button at the top here that uh, randomizes all of the different effects and you can get some like really interesting sounding and looking effects out of it. So some of them are gonna be a lot more harsh like this, but some of them are gonna start looking really cool. Brilliant, thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.